In today's video I'm going to show you how you can learn to use dip pen and ink with watercolour in just a few minutes. Welcome back to my channel. If we haven't met before, my name is Michelle and on this channel you'll find all things watercolour, a little bit of mixed media and even some business and social media training for artists too. So do consider subscribing. If you click the bell notification, you'll get notified every time I have a new video for you. So there are lots of types of ink and pen that you can use alongside watercolour. It's often known as pen and wash when it's used in this way. I'll do tutorials on other types of pen later on, but today we're going to be looking at one of my favourites, in fact the one I use most often, which is an old-fashioned dip pen. So in a minute I'll point the camera downwards and talk about the materials themselves, but first of all I'm just going to show you a painting that I made myself, and you can see that it's a lot more loose than I would normally, uh, normally the style I would normally work in. And that's because with pen and wash, what happens is the ink is really, really so much more forceful than the watercolour. By, by which I mean that if you draw something in ink, um, say a church, you can do anything with the watercolour. You know, you can chuck all different colours along the top, you can paint it bright pink, you can bleed outside the edges. It doesn't matter, it's still going to look like a church. And so it enables you, even if you normally paint fairly precisely, it enables you to paint a lot more loosely and to work a lot more quickly. And that's the second thing it's good for, is it's good for, and this applies to all pen work, it's good for really detailed subjects. Now, if you've got a subject like um, a harbour full of boats or some really complex buildings, anything where there's lots of line, lots of detail, would take you absolutely forever to do it in pure watercolour. This is where pen can come in handy. Now, I will give one caveat to this. Now, if you're doing an ordinary watercolour painting and you've started painting, and you find yourself reaching for pen because the painting isn't working, that's not a good sign. So I've got a video about that which I'd like you to watch up here later on, and that's all about using tone in watercolour. So if you find that you reach for a pen halfway through your watercolour, it normally means that your tonal contrast simply isn't good enough. So whilst working in pen is absolutely fine, it's probably a decision that you should make at the beginning of the painting rather than something that you should grab to rescue a painting. You want to be making that decision at the beginning, is it a watercolour painting or is it a pen and ink painting? So I'm going to point the camera downwards now, I'll explain to you all about the materials we're going to use and how to do the technique itself. So before we get started let's run through the materials we're going to use very very quickly. So I've got watercolour paper here, um, this is a standard knot surface, you can use hot press, I don't actually think it's necessary for pen and wash and hot press is always a little bit harder to paint on. So I've got standard watercolour paper, though it is a fairly smooth one. I've also got um, a putty rubber and a 4B pencil, which we're going to do our initial drawing with. Then I've got some dip pens. So what you do with a dip pen is you buy a holder like this. Um, I don't know if you can see close enough. I'll put, a, um, I'll put a photograph in actually of the end of the dip pen. So you buy the nibs separately and you want to buy a medium drawing nib. You'll know if you've got a drawing nib because it will have a sort of a point or a rounded end. Of course you can buy these in sets too. What you want to watch out for is the calligraphy nibs. You don't want to buy a calligraphy nib. You will know if it's a calligraphy nib because the end has got a square end on it and they're not good for drawing unless you're doing specific calligraphy style things. And uh, these nibs just slot in. You can pick a big one or a small one. You just push them in along the edge there and they hold tight. Once they get old like this one, they can tend to get a bit gunked up. This one's rather rusty. You know, lots of my students have used it. A lot of the ink has dried on the nib. I actually find sometimes these are better for drawing with than the brand new ones because they're just sort of a bit thicker and they pick up a bit more ink. I've got this De La Roni FW ink, but Winsor & Newton also do a nice ink. You want to make sure that it's waterproof. You can use um, a sepia like this if you want more of a sort of um, an old look to your work, which is what I'm going to use today, or you can use a black, and they do also come in bright colours. And the reason I like this FW ink is because it's got a pipette, so I can take a little bit of ink out and put it into an inkwell. I never take my, uh, my dip pen and go straight into the bottle of ink, and the reason for that is I would pick up too much ink, and then it might drip, and I'm in a world of trouble because it doesn't come off the paper. So what I've got instead are some little glass jars, and I would use one of these to, uh, to put some ink in. These are things that I've acquired. They're not specifically for um, ink work. This one had eyeshadow in. This one had lip gloss in. I'm so vain. Um, this one, I think, had some jam 
in from a little hotel. Are you supposed to take those from hotels? Okay, I didn't do that. It wasn't me. I don't know where it came from. Right, so anyway, I have these. I've got loads of these little jars. Um, as I said, I keep lots of these things because my students use them. My favourite are actually these tiny, tiny ones. And I'm actually going to put some ink in. I'm not even going to fill it all the way up. Just enough so that if I tip it on the side, I can you know, dip the, uh, dip the nib in about four millimetres. The more ink you pick up, especially if you get a bubble of ink on the back of the nib, the more likely it is to drip. The other reason I like these is because I can hold them close to where I'm working. I'm not sort of reaching over, coming back and dripping the ink on the way back. So there's that as well. In addition to those, I have some paintbrushes. I've got a size 10 here and a size 6. I may not need both of them. I might just use one or the other, depending on the size of the, uh, the work. I'm going to use those to spread the ink across so we get some nice areas of shadow because the good thing about this FW ink or any of these acrylic inks is they are still water soluble for a few minutes after they hit the paper and then once they dry you can put the watercolour on top. I've also got some of this, some kitchen paper. You can use a rag if you want to be a bit more environmentally friendly. I must start doing that and this is just so that um, if I've got too much water or too much ink on my brush I can dry like this. I am not ever going to dip my brush straight into the ink. It is so highly pigmented. I am, you know, if you do that kind of thing, you're on your own, you're living dangerously. Um, I don't mind living dangerously, do a few martial arts with getting smacked up, but I'm not crazy enough to dip my paintbrush straight into a full um, jar of ink. That's just madness. So in a little while, I'm gonna show you a larger full painting that I'm working on. But first of all, we'll just make a little flower, shall we? Just so I can show you how to work in the medium. And um, I've just got some flowers here that I cut from a magazine. And I'm just going to have a go at lightly sketching a flower. So what you're gonna do with this technique is you're going to do a bit of drawing first. Now it's only, um, like I say with watercolor painting, this is only to inform you where to put the ink. I'm not being too um, exact precise with this because I'm just doing quick little drawing and trying to talk at the same time so it's not going to be, you know, it's uh, it, the flower's mother will not recognize it. It's just going to be a generic flower. Um, so we're going to put the, uh, the pen on afterwards. So this is just to inform us roughly where the pen goes. It shouldn't be hugely detailed. If you put too much detail in at this stage, what happens is you just end up being really kind of paint by numbers and um, and you just end up with a very stilted drawing. So what I'm going to do is even though I'm doing this initial pencil drawing, once I work in with the ink, it's going to be sort of um, quite loose. I'm not going to necessarily stick to exactly the, uh, exactly the places that I've put the pencil. I'm just going to use it as a guideline. So give me a couple of minutes and I will... Uh, get this done. I'm not going to make you watch all of this. I'm going to just finish this little drawing and then we'll speed ahead to where I apply the ink. So as if by magic my flower is drawn and now I'm going to get on and do the ink work. So you can see I've just put a very very small amount of ink in there just enough so that if I tip it up I've got enough to dip in the, uh, the pen. You want to turn it over at this point just make sure there's not a big bubble of ink on the back and make sure that uh, it's not going to drip everywhere and then I'm going to start filling in what I've done. If you're right-handed it may be a good idea to work from top left and vice versa. If you're left-handed, if you're working on a large, large picture, um, this ink stays wet for quite a while. It's easy to think it's dry and then move your hand across and smudge it. So I'm going to start up in this corner and it's certainly something, you know, it's all right if you're doing a small thing, but if you're doing a big landscape you certainly want to um, start at the top and work down so that you're not leaning in your work and it lessens the potential then of there being any uh, any smudging. So I'm going to start working here. Now I want to work much more loosely than I would do usually so I'm trying to, what I'm aiming for is that the, uh, I really give this impression of looseness so I don't want to just go exactly where the, uh, exactly where the pencil was. I want to allow myself the freedom to just draw naturally. Now when I've done a little bit like that, what I'm going to do is go in while it's still wet with the paintbrush. So I'm going to use a small paintbrush in this case because I'm working on fairly small things here. And 
I can then go in with a little bit of water and start to spread the ink. Now I've seen some of my students, um, what they do is they'll do all of the ink drawing and then they'll go around and sort of re-wet the ink and then go in. It's so long-winded, it's much easier just to go in as you work, just do a little bit at a time like this. And can you see where we're getting that shadow in? So if you're not sure where the shadow should go, it's going to go any part of the flower that dips in or any part of your subject that dips in, anything that's behind something else, anything that you want to recede, that's where you want to put the shadow in, anything that you want to come forward, you want to leave it as white paper. The more ink work you do like this, the more you're going to uh, to have done and the less you're going to need to go in with the paint. So the more ink, the less time it's going to spend, um, going to take you to do the painting. Right, so I'm going to continue round here and continue building up. The good thing about a dip pen like this is it leaves a very sensitive line. So as you, uh, as you work round, you find that the line gets narrower and narrower. And this is something, this is an effect that you can't really get with a liner pen. A liner pen is designed, um, you know, they're very well made and they're very carefully designed to draw with exactly the same width, whether that's a wide liner pen or a narrow liner pen. They're designed to keep this, uh, you know, to keep the ink line consistent. That's what they're for. But it's a little bit dull, isn't it? So this, uh, this type of dip pen will give you a much more sensitive line, a line that starts thick and goes thin. You know, you can build it up in places. Again, I've put a little bit more on like that. Now we could just leave it like that. You know, you don't have to do this shadow technique. You can just use the um, ink pen as it is. It's just a matter of, you know, different strokes, different folks. Just depends what you want to do in each particular piece of work. But it really can save you some time in putting shadows and things like that in. And we're just going to keep building up. You'll find that once you've got a little bit of, uh, you know, ink on your brush like that, you can then just literally just take it up and start painting with it. And you see how we start to build up then. We're going to start to build this sort of, this little bit of wet ink there. Can't resist it. We're going to start to build up this sort of comprehensive image of the flower. So I'm going to scoot ahead now and finish this bit of painting off. So just before we carry on with this video, could I ask you for a quick favour? Could I ask you please to click the like button because it sends a really strong signal to YouTube that this is a good video, means they show it to more people and my channel grows faster. And when we get to the end of the video, if you found it at all useful, could you please share it for me so you can share on social media or with friends and that helps me as well and I'm super, super grateful. So here we are, I've almost finished my, uh, my ink drawing. So you can see that in some places I've kind of faded the uh, the ink out to clean water. So any technique that you have learnt to do with your watercolours, and if you don't know how to do this edge blending technique, I'll, um, I'll put a link up above to another video I've got that'll show you how to do that. But anywhere that you've uh, learnt any kind of blending techniques or anything like that, you can also use these with the ink. Now another thing that I sometimes do, although I won't put the brush directly into the ink, what you can do, and I sometimes do this on my ordinary paint palette, is you can mix up a little bit of ink and water so that you can kind of have a watered down version of the ink that you've just got ready to paint with. So if you've got anywhere where the, um, the ink has started to dry, like this bit here, you can just mix a little bit of ink with water and apply it in the same way that you would paint. However, don't miss the opportunity to pull at least some of the ink across while it's wet because it just uh, it just looks much more beautiful when that happens. So I've done this really, really quickly. It's just a quick demo. Now, an area like this, I wanted this to be a bit darker and it's dry, so I can just go back in with the ink again. If you go with the ink onto an area that's slightly damp, what happens is you tend to get rather a uh, sort of a furry line appear. I'll show you actually over here. Put some fresh ink in, see if it'll do it. You can get almost a furriness to the line. So it's something that's, uh, it's a medium that's worth experimenting with. It's really, really beautiful. Just put one or two um, finishing touches to it. 
anywhere that's an area that's behind something like here, you want to drop a little bit of, of shadow, a little bit of ink in there. The more you do with the ink, the less you have to do with the watercolour. And pen and ink can become a really, really quick medium. And um, it be can become a medium that's really, really loose and lovely. So I think, uh, let's just put one little bit over here. I think we'll leave it at that. And then I'm going to just um, chuck some watercolour on top just to show you how versatile this medium is and how easily you can paint on top of it. So let's just finish that little bit off. And there we are. So the ink on my flower is dry and I'm going to do something very important before I put the paint on and that's I'm going to take a rubber across and remove any excess pencil and that will just mean that it's better to take it off at this point because it will stop it getting trapped underneath the, uh, the watercolour painting. So don't rub it too hard but just get off any excess like that. Now I'm going to take a large brush and I'm just going to work directly on. So I've got some palettes here, I've got some yellows um, and I've got some oranges and I'm just going to uh, really start chucking the, uh, the paint directly on. So let's go on with some of this bright colour here. And I want you just to see how easy it is once you've got the ink done to put the watercolour on. So let's go in, I've got this lovely sort of, I think it's a Windsor orange here. And I'm trying to think what the other colour is, that would be a cadmium yellow deep. And you really can just let one colour bleed into another. And it takes all of the, uh, I've got a little bit of lemon over to one side, let's put a bit of that on the outside as well. It really takes all of the difficulty out of the painting. You don't even have to stay within the lines. Let's purposely go outside of the lines here. Look at that. I'm going to put some water on here. I don't want any hard edges within this flower, so I'm just going to put some water on along there. And let's go in with a bit more of this orange. I want to get a bit of a feeling of depth in the middle there, so let's drop some of that in. So. Can you see the absolute ease of painting once you have the ink underneath? I would generally be a little bit tidier than this, not because it's a good idea, but just because I'm obsessively neat. But for the purposes of this video, I want to show you how loose you can be with your painting once you have the ink in place. Let's get a little bit more of this yellow around here. So I'm using cadmium yellow deep, a tiny bit of lemon, and I've got this Windsor orange in the middle. Windsor orange is rather a pink orange, so it's a red-based orange. I've also got a permanent orange, which is much more sort of traditional orange, but this Windsor orange is, uh, is rather lovely. Now you want to be careful that you don't go too dark. As soon as you go too dark, what happens is you cover the ink up. So we don't want to do that. I'm just going to get a little bit of this. Windsor orange in places around here just to give it a little bit of interest. Here we are. I've got a bit too much water sitting down the bottom here. I've actually got my board tipped away from me because it's easy to film that way. Just going to pick a little bit of that up on my brush and look at that. Isn't it lovely? So I thought I'd also show you a larger picture I'm working on. So this is a picture that I'm working on for an online course I'm running which is eight different um, techniques of using watercolour with eight different types of mixed media. And the first module is this Japanese lady illustration, which was inspired by this photograph I took in a museum. Now, generally speaking, you can't use somebody else's artwork, but if something is even hundreds or thousands of years old, then you're fairly safe. You know, nobody's going to sue you for a drawing picture of a Greek statue, for example. So I'm using this lady as inspiration for a larger painting. So I'm at the stage now where I'm starting to apply the ink. Now there's going to be a lot more leaves around the top than this, but to be honest, I don't need to uh, to draw all of those. Now I am advising the people that are taking the course, if they're beginners or if they haven't used ink before, to draw every part because they may need to. But if you're more experienced, you can just start doing a little bit of freestyling with the ink. You notice I haven't freestyled with the lady. I'm keeping lots of drawing on her because uh, I'm not quite that brave. But when it comes to simple things like leaves and flowers, I'm pretty confident about putting these in just with the 
pen. So I'm going to go in, going behind these leaves that I've done first of all, and adding these flowers. I'm starting at the top of the picture so that I don't smudge as I come down. And what I'll do is I'll put um, I'll put a couple of things in the um, in the video description when I finish this painting eventually, which is it's not obviously going to be finished at the time of making this YouTube video. But when I do finish this painting, is I'll put a link so that you can see what the finished picture looked like, the finished illustration looks like. I'll also put a link down there to the page um, with the online course on if any of you are interested in taking a course with me. Now if the video has only just come out there is the opportunity for you to be a beta tester on my course and to get the course for half price um, simply because I need help and feedback so that I make sure that the course is absolutely perfect before it's put up to full price and properly launched. So if this particular course doesn't interest you then do remember to join my Facebook group which is also called In The Studio with Michelle Weber because you'll get the offer of all of my courses as beta testers when they're brand new, when I'm building them, you get the offer to take them at half price in order that I get that feedback on them while they're being made. So I'm gonna continue working on this now. As I said, it's going to be um, a, full, um, a full painting and I'm envisaging her in the illustration, actually, she's in pink. I don't know, I, I, I've got this feeling that I might put her in yellow, actually, and I'm also feeling like put in some really strong sort of um, ultramarine blue sky and white clouds kind of behind as you see in some of these Japanese illustrations. So we'll see where it goes. As I said, I'll put a link to the finished piece eventually in the, uh, in the video description. You can have a look at it and see what you think. Let me know in the comments if you like working in pen and if you've used a dip pen before. I know some of my students can be a little bit nervous of them, a little bit sort of you know, resistant wanting to go back to liner pens, but really a dip pen is a beautiful, beautiful expressive medium. So I do encourage you to have a go. Please remember to like, share and subscribe and you can watch another one of my videos right now.